So we've already talked about a lot of these signaling pathways already. We've already talked about the receptors with tyrosine kinase domains. We've already talked about the G-protein signal transduction pathway. Um, if you took immunology, you're probably familiarized with the integrins or the fast ligand signaling pathway. From developmental biology, you probably learned about the hedgehog signaling pathway. Um, and in both biochemistry and immunologies, we talked about the Janus kinase signaling pathway. But one of the reasons why I wanted to show this picture at the very beginning of this is it shows one all the wonderful crisscrossing and converging points of multiple different transduction pathways, but two, it shows how they all kind of converge on the same points of gene regulation, which ultimately plays a role in cell proliferation, but they also all converge on the concept of apoptosis. And that's really the two things that this video is going to be about. Okay, so I'm gonna make the assumption that you're familiarized with the process of mitosis, right? You've been through general biology or high school biology, you learned about all those phases. Um, but one of the things that regulates mitosis really is at the intracellular level, we have the buildup of proteins called cyclins, and then once they reach a certain concentration, they'll ultimately result in the activation of cyclin-dependent kinases. And so that's what this picture over here on the right is showing, the rising and falling of the different types of cyclins with each you know, specific subphase, you know, G1, S, G2, and so on and so forth. And then also the different type of cyclin molecules that activates different types of cyclin dependent kinases. But for this video, mostly what I'm going to be talking about is just primary messengers, the first messengers of the mitogenic pathways. And those usually tend to be a growth factor. Epidermal growth factor would be an example of that, or insulin-like growth factor would be another example of like that. And these are not just involved in mitogenic pathways, right? When we took biochemistry, we talked about the epidermal growth factor receptor. We talked about the insulin-like growth factor receptor. And the reason why we, we didn't put them into context is because they can vary with different types of context. So these guys are not just involved in mitogenic pathways. One of the signaling pathways that your textbook really stresses an understanding of is the MAP kinase pathway. For some reason, that's the only one that they focused on. So let's just talk about this. Um, and it's, it's very, it's the exact same initial steps to what we saw with the epidermal growth factor when we talked about in biochemistry. But we ended that with the activation of ROS, and they kind of, you know, elaborate a little bit more on that. This pathway, just like all the other pathways, not just involved in mitosis, plays a role in differentiation, inflammation, angiogenesis, a whole bunch of other things that we're going to talk about in this specific context of every little biological system that we talk about. You've already familiarized with this receptor, or ligand binds to the receptor, receptor dimerizes, cross-phosphorylation, blah, 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 blah. No second messenger, just a long series of uh, phosphate uh, being added on to different proteins. Once the MAP kinase gets phosphorylated. It's now able to pass through the nuclear pore complexes. And once it goes to the nuclear pore complex, it's going to phosphorylate transcription factors. It's gonna result in the transcription of C-MYC and C-FOS, which are transcription factors themselves. And ultimately what they're going to result in is the production of cyclins, which are involved in regulating the cell processes there. And so both the C-MYC and the C-FOS are involved with cancer pathways, which we'll touch up on that later. And if you want to, you can just pause the video if you'd like and read about this but all this is the stuff that we've already pretty much talked about in terms of the epidermal growth factor pathway. And I'm coming back to this picture here. One of the reasons that I like it is it shows the fact that the MAPK pathway is not the only type of pathway, but let's just focus on this for a second here. So here's the RTK, GRB2, SOS, ROF, ultimately resulting in the MAPK, FOS, you'll see there, and then MYC over here and results in the production of cyclins and other type of cyclin-dependent kinases and the, the pathways that these guys are all involved with.